So we're down in uh, cedar tag alder slash uh, balsam swamp here and I had a drag trail coming in. Looks like a little disturbance on this trail here. And we'll walk through and see if there's any immediate signs of bone or beds. Looks like we have a bed uh, right here. Fairly large animal. Uh, deer, maybe wolf size, possibly a small bear. And it looks like we have a little fawn tooth here. So, pretty good sign um, of the mortality. It's not a slip collar. And we'll take a look around a little bit more and see if we find any other evidence of uh, bones, trails, any type of carnivore hair, any fawn hair, etc. So, a couple more minutes of investigation, I found one of the uh, fawn ear tags. Looks like it's been chewed up pretty extensively. And uh, you can see the chewing on it there. Oh, I just found on the same trail a little uh, piece of jaw here. Uh, fawn jaw, as you can see. Uh, crushed up. Uh, could be, uh, you usually don't see that with bobcat. I uh, usually see this a lot with uh, both the canid predators and uh, possibly bear. I was just following up the trail a little bit more and uh, one of the key things we always want to look for is potential uh, drag marks or beds of course and looks like we have some disturbed grass uh, heading up this way. Uh, it's matted down through the marsh and it's like a little disturbance. Uh, it could be an adult deer but uh, more than likely uh, the predator. Well I just came upon the collar a little bit farther on the trail leading up here and yeah, I'll take a look at it. It's buried in the moss a little bit and looks like we have a pretty good tear in it and uh, maybe a little spot of blood there uh, in the middle of the collar. So we have some uh, chewing on the end of the antenna there. So it looks like they might have spent some time in this area. Well, another clue here. Uh, looks like we had a really disturbed trail going right to where the uh, supposed predation site is where we found the ear tag in the collar. And uh, right here is a uh, very, very fresh coyote scat. So uh, we'll follow this trail up. Uh, it's going right next to uh, this tree in front of you and see if we can see any signs of fawn hair or anything that may indicate that the uh, a coyote may have predated on this fawn. Well, after about uh, 30 minutes of searching, I found uh, both sides of the jawbone so far of the fawn and uh, little pieces of cartilage, but uh, what we're really looking for is the uh, a piece of the hide uh, with uh, some hemorrhaging on it, which would indicate that the fawn was alive uh, when the animal uh, the animal was taken, and therefore it was uh, predated and uh, wasn't uh, sick or ill, and was uh, already post mortem when the uh, supposed uh, coyotes in this situation took the animal. Well, after about an hour and a half of searching, uh, I didn't really find too much around the site. Uh, I searched within about 100 meters of uh, where I found the ear tags and the collar and the pieces of bone and uh, saw a few coyote beds, a few fresh coyote scats and tracks, uh, a little bit of coyote hair. Um, but the one smoking bullet I was looking for is a piece of fawn hide uh, with some hemorrhaging, or at least some fawn hide to look at it. And I uh, did not find that, uh, but the bones looked very fresh. Obviously, it was uh, from this fawn, uh, you know, as the ear tags and collar were here. And uh, saw many fresh trails, and so there's likely a, probably a pack of coyotes uh, that uh, drug it in uh, from a different location. Uh, we're about, uh, as the GPS reads, about two miles from where this fawn usually hangs out. And the interesting thing is, two days ago, I located this fawn uh, during the nighttime. Then subsequently, uh, yesterday afternoon, about eight hours later, uh, the fawn was located on mortality. And uh, between the time I came to investigate it was about an hour uh, past the mortality time, and we could not hear the fawn. And so we came back today and we heard it uh, back in this location, which is another extra, uh, about a mile and a half past where we heard it uh, yesterday afternoon. And so that really indicates uh, likely something, uh, probably coyotes had uh, predated it in a different location, uh, possibly eating, eating the carcass, uh, you know, just so they could energetically drag it back here. Um, so that's probably why I'm not really finding any of the, the flesh or the hide. Um, and they could have dragged the rest of that off to a different location from where they actually uh, spent some time here, it looked like. So um, based on the, the line of evidence that I do have here, it looks like it probably was a coyote predation, so it's uh, listed as a coyote probable. 
And uh, we don't know for certain that it was a predation, but like I said, based on the evidence and the, the dragging from a different location, it's, it's likely um, that the animals uh, predated it uh, about two days ago based on the PET of the collar and uh, our investigation time here since we picked up the mortality. So um, that's what uh, this investigation entails.